Today, we're gonna to break down everything you need to know to pass step one with a lot of confidence, but doing it while prepping and studying for all of your courses during medical school. Let's get into it. Hey friends, in case you're new here, my name is Lux, I'm a cardiology fellow. In today's episode, I'm gonna break down really how to master step one prep while you're studying for all of your classes during medical school. Let's get into it. Now, this episode was inspired by a coaching call that I did with one of you guys, one of our viewers who was interested in having his entire step one study plan evaluated, critiqued, and looked for opportunities on how to optimize. So I'm gonna talk about some of the pearls that we had in that coaching call. And if you guys are interested in any of our step one resources, like our free study calendar, I'll link that down below. And if you're interested in any of our coaching programs or one-on-one -on -one video calls, I'll link that down below as well. Now, the first thing you have to perfect is minimizing your amount of resources. There are so many resources out there that feel like more is better. And one of the questions that we often get are, what are the best resources? And am I using enough resources to master step one? I made a video on the best step one resources. So I'll link that down below where I go through a lot of them in detail, but often my recommendation be using no more than two to three resources for your entire step one study plan. Usually that includes one main question bank source for most of us, that's UWorld, having some kind of resource that helps teach and ideally quiz you for most people that comes to a video resource like Sketchy, Picmonic, Amboss, Boards and Beyond, those are some common ones to use. And then finally, some people will add an extra resource, whether that's another video resource, let's say you use Sketchy and Pathoma, or you're using a resource such as Anki and using a pre-made deck like an Anki deck. And those are examples of two to three resources that you should focus on and avoid adding more fluff because especially when you're busy studying for your other classes, you wanna minimize what you have access to and maximize the utility of all of those. All of them will help you pass step one as long as you use them effectively. And you can't do that if you're trying to balance four to seven resources during your study plan. And so personally, if I was early on in medical school, or if I was at least a few months away from taking the actual exam, I would ask myself, what is the video style resource that I wanna use? And often that comes with a little bit of trial and error. Maybe you have some of your classmates have already used one of them, asking if you can check out some of their videos and they can show them on your laptop, whatever you need to do. So Boards and Beyond, Amboss, people will use Sketchy and Pathoma, and some people will use Picmonic. Trying those out, you don't have to necessarily pay for all of them. Sometimes some of them come with trials or again, asking your peers of their opinions, picking one. And if you like it, don't ask yourself if there's a better one out there. If you like it enough to say, I'm going to use this and this will be my resource. If you find that there are things that you don't like about it, see if the other resources are going to be able to fill that hole. Maybe you like shorter videos, maybe you like longer videos. Maybe you like things that have more questions or more text. Once you find something, don't look for the silver lining or the grass is greener on the other side kind of resource. Pick the resource that you think you can stick to that you can enjoy that can help you learn this material and then phone focus on other resources that are very similar to it make that your main core one tip number two is especially when you're going through your class material there is limited amount of times for you to do all of the step one related things but really priority wise i know that when i get closer to my test day when i get closer to doing those practice exams to see how ready i am some institutions even make you take a practice exam to see if you're ready for step one or actually sitting for dedicated i want that time especially when i'm very close to exam to be more dedicated towards questions. I don't wanna be spending a lot of time doing flashcards and videos particularly because those are time intensive. But when you're early on in medical school or several months away, try to get as many of those videos done, if not all of them, so that way when it's time to sit for dedicated, when it's time to start a few weeks ahead, then you can go ahead and really jump into the question resources. And so personally, when I was studying for step one, the main resources that most students were using was a combination of Sketchy and Pathoma and then often UWorld. And so that was kind of my gauntlet of three resources that I used. And I tried to get through all of the Pathoma and most of the sketchy videos before I sat for my dedicated. That gave me about six weeks, really five and a half to just do as many questions as possible. And then if I needed that extra time to go back to watching those videos, I didn't feel like my schedule was overstuffed. So trying to find a realistic schedule alongside your classes where you can say, I'm on my endocrine block. Maybe I can watch these 15 videos over this next month about endocrine because then it'll help me for my classes, my quizzes, and ideally I'll be able to get through my step one material. If you're starting a little bit later, you can ask, can I use my weekends to watch videos from old material I've already learned and trying to see if you can squeeze them in. The most important part of this whole plan is that you make it realistic. Much rather be able to pick a plan that you can stick to for three to four months than something that is ambitious and then you realize two weeks in that you just can't simply stick with it. Now before we get back to the rest of the episode, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, which is Picmonic. If you're on your medical journey and you haven't had much luck finding an all-in-one resource that can help you learn the material that you need for your classes, your rotations, as well as help you quiz and test to build that long-term retention, the Picmonic may be exactly the resource you've been looking for. And one of the most 
unique aspects about Picmonic has to be their story-based videos, which combine these fun, memorable, and silly images to help you remember specific features of a disease or a treatment. And when I say videos, I mean tons of them, with endless playlists that you can sort based on the class you're currently taking, the board exams you may be prepping for, even the board resource you're learning from, such as first aid for step one, or even the rotation that you want to honor. In addition, they have very simple and effective ways to quiz yourself, such as their daily quiz feature, which allows you to continue to stay sharp on your past topics that you've learned to make sure you achieve mastery plus so much more. So once again, if you're on your medical journey and you haven't had much luck finding that all-in-one resource that can help you learn and master medicine to make the entire journey a lot less stressful, then Picmonic may be a great resource for you. So if you're interested in learning more, there'll be a link down below in the description. And our friends at Picmonic have also been nice enough to include an extra 15% off for our audience members for those of you that want to give them a shot. So if you want more information or want to get started with Picmonic, click that link down below in the description. And of course, thank you to Picmonic for being today's sponsor. Step number three is getting your feet wet of trying questions earlier. Often there is a big focus on doing things like the onking deck and going through video resources that often you just don't give yourself enough exposure of what step one questions truly look like until you have that oh moment after you do enough vignettes of saying these are kind of hard and it's not because you haven't done enough Anki cards you haven't done enough videos you simply haven't put yourself in situations where you're given a big vignette some questions that don't look like they have to do anything with the vignette and answer choices that even look less likely that they have to do anything really and have to find the patterns and the clues and avoid those traps. That is a skill. Test taking comes with a skill. If you guys are interested in my approach of how I did UWorld questions, one of the most popular videos that we have here on the channel, I'll link that down below on how I approach practice questions, including using UWorld, but that approach comes with time. And so when you're in your classes, you don't necessarily need to do 10,000 questions or all 3,000 questions that UWorld has. Instead saying, I Again, I'm on my endocrine block. Maybe every single week I can first start with 10 questions on Saturday, 10 questions on Sunday. Then as I get more and more comfortable with endocrine, perhaps I can do 20 questions on Saturday, 20 questions on Sunday. As you start to build that muscle of doing practice questions, then you'll be able to do 40 questions at a time or two blocks with a total of 80 questions at a time. And thus you'll be able to build that stamina that you'll need to ultimately sit for multiple blocks in a row of step one questions. But the first step is when you're approaching step one alongside your classes, just get that general exposure of practice questions. Ideally, your video resource, if you're using Amboss or Boards and Beyond, for example, will come with questions. If you have a question bank resource like USMLE RX as your kind of resource before you start UWorld, that is completely fine. Now, keep in mind, I am not talking about one resource if it's in the end all be all for the purposes of practice questions or for learning. Aside from UWorld, use whatever you want. Definitely use UWorld, all the other resources will get you there, just commit to the minimal amounts like we talked about earlier. But especially when you're first starting out, getting your feet wet constantly with those practice questions, even if it's five every three to four days, and trying to do it with the classes you're learning will give you enough exposure of the critical thinking that you need when the practice questions truly start to go to the part where you have to do 40 or 80 in a single day. Step number four is getting in the habit of storing all the questions that you miss. Now the beauty of step one prep is when you're ideally studying for a few months of building that foundation, you're gonna be doing a lot of questions, whether it's questions that your professor asks you that are step one related, or doing questions from your video resource at the end of a video, for example. I know Picmonic has their own daily kind of advanced review of questions that they're gonna ask from their videos. Amboss has their own versions. Sketchy has their own types of quizzes. When you're doing those questions, you are going to miss things. And instead of saying, oh, I will try to remember that for later, store that somewhere. Whether that's having a big Google sheet of all the mistakes you've made and where that came from, or even better, just creating an Anki flashcard deck if you love using Anki, then just making a flashcard deck that is meant for all of your missed questions. So personally for me, I literally had an Anki deck that said Luxe's missed step one deck. And that's all it was. It's any question that I missed, whether it's from UWorld or another resource, I put it there. And as I got closer and closer, just doing more and more questions, the start of my day was often just doing what our next tip, which is gonna be going through those missed questions. Because if you can imagine, if you're gonna spend so much time learning things and you're gonna spend so much time making mistakes, if you can store more and more of the mistakes and refine them and avoid making them on test day, you will likely increase your foundational score before you even get to your dedicated. So if I'm gonna do a lot of practice questions over the next few months or the year and a half, whatever time you have between now and step one prep, then that is a lot of time and mistakes to kind of review. And if I can review those gradually throughout the process, then that is less things that will trip me up. And then I can find and learn all those high yield and low high yield information that are needed to pass with kind of a lot of confidence. So getting into finally step five is having a predictable way of repeating those mistakes. Again, okay, 
again, when you're first starting off, it's just important to get your feet wet. So if you're creating an Anki deck, for example, of your missed questions, sometimes just saying once a week, I'm going to go through 30 minutes of as many Anki cards I can from questions that I've missed. And so if you have 5,000 cards in there, doesn't matter. For 30 minutes, you just do as many that you can. As you get closer and closer towards your dedicated prep, then perhaps you make that a daily routine that says before I go to the gym or I'm on the elliptical in the gym, I'm going to spend 20 to 30 minutes doing these questions. And again, as you get closer to your dedicated then saying at the start of my study day and the end of my study day, I'm going to go through all of the mistakes that I've made for 20 to 30 minutes. And you just do as many flashcards as you've had. If you're unfamiliar with Anki or want to get a little bit better, the most popular video that we have here on the channel, I'll be linked down below, breaks down the start A to Z and all the advanced tactics that you need to know. And if you're interested in learning our more advanced techniques, as well as how to use specific decks like the Onking deck, I'll link down below our Med School Blueprint, which includes all of our step one programs that you guys can check out the results students have gotten using that. But that guys is a very simplistic yet effective framework of how to study for step one during your classes. Focus on the material that is linked to whatever you're learning. Ask yourself how you can just naturally include it into your schedule. Try to pick things that are easy to commit to. Don't overcommit to the resources, amount of time or questions that you'll do, get your feet wet, and once it becomes a natural part of your routine, increase your frequency and your amount. And the most important part is to make it to test day or you're dedicated with just as much foundational knowledge as possible, and then using the rest of your dedicated time to really hone in with that level of focus and curiosity that only dedicated brings you, that would help you pass step one with success, I promise you. And so use these tips. Let me know what questions you have about step one. I'll make those in future episodes and videos and podcasts. Let's go ahead and add your comments down below. Again, if you're interested, we have an entire step one playlist here on YouTube, as well as on the podcast. If you're interested in our step one programs, like our step one Academy, I'll link those down below. And if you want to work with me and any of our coaches and getting specific advice and review of your own step one study plan, I'll link down below our coaching program so you guys can go ahead and learn about how to work with us one-on-one -on -one. but with all that being said if you enjoyed this episode hit that like button if you enjoyed this video then you're going to enjoy that video right here on how to answer test questions through using your world as well as this video right here on all of my favorite step one resources step by step and as always my friends thank you so much for being a part of my journey hopefully it has a little help to you guys on yours and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace